Today, I want to talk about how brokers and trading platforms are both lying to their customers and deleting customer complaints. Those complaints are even deleted by FINRA at the request of those brokers, which is absolutely ridiculous. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So Susan Trimbath tweeted saying, in case you missed it, a clean broker check report doesn't mean customers haven't complained. It's just that FINRA actually deletes complaints at the broker's request without talking to the investor who did the complaining. She also tweeted saying a 2021 report found the number of expungements by FINRA rose from 59 in 2015 to 545 in 2018 and 700 in the period between August 2019 and October 2021. Those 700 expungements included 1,360 customer complaints, many where multiple customers even complained about the same broker. So even though FINRA had received a variety of complaints about individual brokers from different customers, they instead didn't even speak to those customers, just expunged the records. And note this is pre the 2021 run up where brokers turned off the buy button. I can only imagine the number of expungements in 2021 and 2022. There's this blog from a law firm talking about how FINRA expunges records from broker check like they never happened. Saying many investors rely upon broker check to research whether their broker has been the subject of complaints by regulators or other customers. However, many investors do not realize that information provided by BrokerCheck is often incomplete, as FINRA provides for a procedure whereby a broker can have complaints erased from their records so they don't appear on BrokerCheck. Saying while it is understandable for a broker to wish to have a baseless complaint removed from their record, FINRA doesn't even investigate any of these complaints to see if they have merit or not. They just expunge records 90% of the time. Instead of doing an actual investigation to see if this complaint is warranted, to see if the broker has actually done anything wrong or has actually committed major crimes, they just expunge the record like it never happened. Now in 2023, a proposal was recently approved to make it significantly more difficult for FINRA to expunge those records. Now there's two problems here. Problem A, why is this needed in the first place? Why haven't FINRA been doing their job? And problem B, it actually created urgency for brokers to get their records expunged. All these brokers were lining up left, right and center to get their records expunged before this ruling was passed. And obviously that means any previous complaints have now disappeared and been removed from the system. And I guess there's a third problem. While it is more difficult for records to be expunged, they can still be expunged just by FINRA request. This just seems like another instance where FINRA is taking the side of these market makers, trading platforms and brokers and helping them expunge their record of any wrongdoing. Signing up to Memo is free, it just requires that temporary deposit, but it's a really great way to help support the channel. You can currently get a guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google and up to 15 free shares on top of that, worth up to $2,000 each. All you have to do is sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below and make the required qualifying temporary deposit. On top of that, Moomoo is easy to use. They've got tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools and their own options trading platform. It also makes me wonder that while Mullen has filed a lawsuit against TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Fidelity and other brokers, will their records just be expunged once again? Will they just receive a small fine or maybe some actual reprimand and some actual punishments? But will their record just then be expunged and be allowed to carry on? I do hope this lawsuit sets some kind of precedent and these brokers and trading platforms are no longer allowed to assist in the creation of synthetic shorts and assist in market manipulation. Susan Trimbath has tweeted before saying the real way to get rid of synthetic shorting is to suspend and close the accounts of brokers who fail to deliver on a regular occurrence. Speaking of which, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America and Goldman Sachs have just been hit with a $53 million fine for failing to properly report millions of derivative transactions. 
Again, this isn't just failing to report longs as shorts. It says, according to the CFTC, Goldman Sachs was fined for unprecedented failures regarding swap data reporting and disclosures of pre-trade mid-market marks. Again, massive failures, this time not surrounding longs and shorts, but surrounding swaps. Again, just another way these market makers manipulate markets and just simply receive small fines. There was more than 1 million occasions since 2013 where Goldman Sachs failed to report this swap data accurately. These aren't simple mistakes by Goldman Sachs. These are things that have been done on purpose. Goldman Sachs is a multi-billion dollar company, one of the largest financial companies in the world. It only employs the best people and it doesn't make silly mistakes. Everything they do is obviously done on purpose. Knowing that it is done on purpose, I think it's ridiculous they only issue small speed bump fines. Again, just another way that FINRA, the SEC, the DTCC and the regulators fail American individuals every single day. And obviously we know this manipulation wouldn't be complete without the mainstream media's help. And Dave Murphy has given an excellent summary on how the mainstream media tried to pull investors from GameStop and from AMC and plonk them into Bed Bath & Beyond where the shorts had already won. Investor Place was saying Bed Bath & Beyond stock is a buy and that you should sell AMC stock for Bed Bath & Beyond because out of all of the meme stocks, Bed Bath & Beyond is the most fundamentally strong. But obviously Bed Bath & Beyond collapsed, they went bankrupt and the stock now no longer exists. I wonder how many people sold their shares of GameStop and AMC to buy Bed Bath & Beyond, which now is unfortunately a worthless company where the shorts won. Again, as Avi points out, there's no accountability to these mainstream media companies that are literally convincing investors to lose their money or at least trying their best to convince investors to lose money. But obviously you and I know the majority of apes have continued to hold strong. However, AMC, other companies and other CEOs are fighting back against this manipulation. The Taylor Swift Vieira's tour heads for a record $150 million to $200 million global opening. Avatar The Way of Water only cracked $134 million, so to see Taylor Swift doing over $200 million would be insane especially as Avatar led to $2.3 billion worldwide at the box office. Taylor Swift on its own could bring in even more. Also guys, I was having a think about the fast moving momentum news plays. I think what I'm gonna do is post the alert or post the trade idea in the community section of my YouTube channel or tweet about it in the pre-market before the market opens. So that way you'll first have the alert in the pre-market before the market opens. Then I'll go through the strategy in that morning video and then in my evening video, recap the trade. That way the alert goes out in time before the market opens and before my morning video. That way if you want, you can get into the trade as well. I think that way will be best because you get the alert before the market opens in the pre-market instead of having to wait for my video to go live by which time the trade may have already played out and it will be in hindsight. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.